For the past month, I've had the pleasure of working just here in Chawton House Library. Its big claim to fame is that it's often referred to in Jane Austen's letters as the Great House. And inside, you can find literary works from women writers from before and after Jane Austen. So join me inside to come and visit this fascinating collection of portraits and women's writings that's held inside this wonderful building. which is on the first floor of Chawton House Library. And this room explores women's writing in the domestic sphere, from letters and diaries to amateur theatrical productions. This room is also laid out for the Eliza Haywood exhibition, which is taking place this month at Chawton House Library. And here we have a collection of all the different works that were inspired by Haywood's style of writing. Inside this room, it's laid out in a very warm way. We can see plenty of portraits on the walls. And the oak, which is in a kind of reddy colour, gives the room a rather pleasing and warm feeling. Stepping out of the oak room, we come to the exhibition room, which is very different in look and feel. As we can see, the Eliza Haywood exhibition is laid out here in full splendour, but this room is frequently changing depending on the exhibitions that are taking place. From 18th century costumes to boards that explain a little bit more about the research that's being carried out here, there's always something interesting to see. It's also a lovely place to come and see the view outside, which is absolutely stunning, heading out of Chawton House. Jane Austen loved visiting this house, and she frequently discusses it in her letters to Cassandra. This house was once owned by her brother and several items personal to Jane, including books that she read and little pieces of furniture that she may have sat and wrote or read at, are still contained here in the library. It's even said by some that her ghost continues to haunt the great house, particularly between these two rooms, known as the exhibition room and the study room. And this is because, back in the day of Jane Austen, these two rooms were not two rooms at all. They were in fact one large room. dedicated to exploring early women's writing, you can also find out some information about gentlemen of the period as well. For example, the dining room is set up to explore the Georgian gentleman's grand tour and how this traditional part of his education exposed him to wider cultural influence. rooms that you come to when you visit Chawton House is the Great Hall, which explores professional female writers from the 18th century. You can find out much 
about the lives of different literary women who were contemporary with Jane Austen. One of my favourite features about this room is all of the portraits that hang. And these are all of very important and famous women from the time period. We even have Georgina, the Duchess of Devonshire. One of the things that I first noticed about this room is that the panelling doesn't quite fit the space. Normally, there would be a guide here to give you a little bit of history about the house itself. And when I came before, he explained that quite a lot of the features in this room dates much earlier than the house itself and were inserted into the house after it was built. So this is why some of the features, particularly in this room, don't quite fit inside the space. <laughs> inside this fascinating house, part of the reason why I'm here is to carry out a little bit of research. So join me inside the upper reading room and I'll tell you what I've been up to. Here at Chawton House Library, I've had the pleasure of working in the upper reading room. And this means that I'm able to look at a number of different books from throughout the collection in a safe environment. My project, which if you've been following my blog, researchadventuresblog.wordpress.com, you will know is about the female experience of music lessons in the 18th century. And I've been able to look at a number of different novels, literary accounts, memoirs, and even books specifically written by women to teach children. One such book is this, which is the child's introduction to thorough bass. It's set as a conversation between a mother and daughter. And inside, she lays out conversations by day, which tells me that she perhaps expected that this series of lessons would happen daily and shows you the kind of progress that each student was expected to make. What's nice about this book is that she often points out the difficulties that children were facing in their music lessons. So you get the student who will ask a question and then the mother having to reiterate a point that she's perhaps already made. I was also quite excited to find two books by Anne Young, who was the first to invent a musical game to teach music in 1801. This lady invented the musical game to be able to teach the rudiments of music theory. Inside these books, I found it quite complex to understand how to actually play the game. And she even notes this herself in this publication, Introduction to Music, in 1803, where she said the original publication in 1801 was perhaps for those who'd already understood the rudiments of music. Whereas her attempt in this book was to teach those who didn't really have a sound knowledge of musical theory, but they could still enjoy the game. Without the physical game here with me, unfortunately I'm not able to know how easy it would be to play, and perhaps with the board I would find it much easier to understand the instructions. But that's a project to come up very, very soon. The reading room itself is quite lovely. So we have all of these books laid up on the shelf, and we also have a portrait of what is presumed to be Fanny Burney, who was the daughter of Charles Burney, a very important musical scholar in the 18th century. 
Unfortunately, her name is not on the portrait. It's just described as portrait of a lady, but it is thought to be Fanny herself. forget that as you come out of Chawton House Library you're met with these spectacular gardens. There's often events that are happening here including garden tours. You just need to pick up a what's on guide to find out all the different activities that are happening within the library itself and out here. There's a number of events happening particularly in June, July and August when hopefully there'll be plenty of warm weather. So that's my tour of Chawton House Library complete, though I will be doing quite a bit more research in the days coming. If you want to come and see the Great House for yourself, then it's very reasonably priced. It's £7 for an adult and £3 for a child if you want to see the house and gardens, and £4 for an adult or £2 for a child if you want to come and see the gardens only. The opening times for this year were from the 21st of March to the 28th of October. So do bear in mind that if you're coming for a trip at Christmas time, the library's not likely to be open. It's definitely something to come and see. All the rooms have a very different look and feel, and there's different exhibitions that are happening all the time, as well as different events. So it's not just a place for one visit, you can keep coming back and seeing different aspects of the house. If you have enjoyed my videos so far, then please do give this one a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as there's still plenty more of Austin to see and do while I'm here. Also give me a comment below if there's something that you'd like me to go and visit or explore that I haven't done already. So thanks very much for watching and hope to see you again.